so incontestable that, for the moment, Mr. Jellyband was not ready with his usual flow of argument. "'It do seem more like April than September, don't it?' continued Mr. Hempseed dolefully, as a shower of raindrops fell with a sizzle upon the fire. "'Aye, that it do,' assented the worthy host. "'But then, what can you spec, Mr. Hempseed?' I says, with such a government as we've got. Mr. Hempseed shook his head with an infinity of wisdom, tempered by deeply rooted mistrust of the British climate and the British government. "'I don't spec nothing, Mr. Jellyband,' he said. "'Poor folks like us is of no account up there in Lunnon. I knows that, and it's not often as I do complain. But when it comes to such wet weather in September, and all me fruit are rotting and a dying, like the gumption mother's first born, and doing no more good than they did, poor dears, save a lot more Jews, peddlers and such, with their oranges and such like foreign ungodly fruit, which nobody'd buy if English apples and pears was nicely swelled. As the scriptures say, that's quite right, Mr. Empseed, retorted Jellyband, and as I says, what can you spect? There's all them Frenchy devils over the channel yonder a murdering their king and nobility, and Mr. Pitt and Mr. Fox and Mr. Burke are fighting and a wrangling between them, we Englishmen should allow them to go on in their ungodly way. "'Let em murder,' says Mr. Pitt. "'Stop em, says Mr. Burke. "'And let em murder,' says I, "'and be dem to em, said Mr. Hempseed, emphatically, for he had but little liking for his friend Jellyband's political arguments, wherein he always got out of his depth, and had but little chance for displaying those pearls of wisdom which had earned for him so high a reputation in the neighbourhood, and so many free tankards of ale at the fisherman's rest.' "'Let a murder,' he repeated again. "'But don't let's have such rain in September, "'for that is agin the law, and the scriptures, which says, "'Lud, Mr. Harry, how you made me jump!' "'It was unfortunate for Sally and her flirtation "'that this remark of hers should have occurred at the precise moment "'when Mr. Hempseed was collecting his breath, "'in order to deliver himself one of those scriptural utterances "'which made him famous, "'for it brought down upon her pretty head "'the full flood of her father's wrath.' "'Now then, Sally, me girl, now then,' he said, trying to force a frown upon his good-humoured face. "'Stop that foolin' with them young jackanapes, and get on with the work.' "'The work's getting on all right, father.' But Mr. Jellyband was peremptory. He had other views for his buxom daughter, his only child, who would in God's good time become the owner of the fisherman's rest, than to see her married to one of these young fellows who earned but a precarious livelihood with their net. "'Did ye hear me speak, my girl?' he said in that quiet tone, which no one inside the inn dared to disobey. "'Get on with my Lord Tony's supper, for if it ain't the best we can do, and he not satisfied, see what you'll get, that's all.' Reluctantly, Sally obeyed. "'Is you expecting special guests then to-night, Mr. Jellyband?' asked Jimmy Pitkin, in a loyal attempt to divert his host's attention from the circumstances connected with Sally's exit from the room. "'Aye, that I be,' replied Jellyband. "'Friends are my Lord Tony hisself. "'Dukes and duchesses from over the water yonder, "'whom the young lord and his friend Sir Andrew Folkes, "'and the other young noblemen, "'have helped out of the clutches of their murdering devils.' "'But this was too much for Mr. Hempseed's querulous philosophy. "'Lud,' like, he said, "'what do they do that for, I wonder? "'I don't hold not with interfering in other folks' ways. "'As the scriptures say, "'Maybe, Mr. Hempseed, interrupted Jellyband, with biting sarcasm, "'as you're a personal friend of Mr. Pitt, "'and as you says along with Mr. Fox, "'let a murder, says you.' "'Pardon me, Mr. Jellyband,' feebly protested Mr. Hempseed. "'I don't know as I ever did.' But Mr. Jellyband had at last succeeded in getting upon his favourite hobby-horse, and had no intention of dismounting in any hurry. "'Or maybe you've made friends with some of them French chaps who, they do say, "'have come over here a purpose to make us Englishmen agree with their murdering ways.' "'I don't know what you mean, Mr. Jellyband,' suggested Mr. Hempseed. "'All I know is—all I know is,' loudly asserted mine host, "'that there was my friend Peppercorn, who owns the blue-faced boar, "'and as true and loyal an Englishman as you'd see in the land. "'And now look at him. "'He made friends with some of them frog-eaters.' "'obnobbed with them, just as if they was Englishmen, "'and not just a lot of immoral, God-forsaken, foreign spies. "'Well, and what happened? "'Pevercorn, he now ups and talks of revolutions and liberty, "'and down with the aristocrats, just like Mr. Hempseed over here.' "'Pardon me, Mr. Jellyband,' again interposed Mr. Hempseed feebly. "'I don't know as I ever did.' 
Mr. Jellyband, had appealed to the company in general, who were listening awestruck and open-mouthed at the recital of Mr. Peppercorn's defalcations. At one table, two customers, gentlemen apparently by their clothes, had pushed aside their half-finished game of dominoes, and had been listening for some time, and evidently with much amusement, at Mr. Jellyband's international opinions. One of them now, with a quiet, sarcastic smile still lurking round the corners of his mobile mouth, turned towards the centre of the room where Mr. Jellyband was standing. "'You seem to think, mine honest friend,' he said quietly, "'that these Frenchmen—spies, I think you called them—are mighty clever fellows to have made mincemeat, so to speak, of your friend Mr. Peppercorn's opinions. How did they accomplish that now, think you?' "'Lad, sir, I suppose they talked him over.' Those Frenchies, I've heard it said, I've got the gift of gab, and Miss Remsey, dear, will tell you how it is that they just twist some people round their little finger like. Indeed, and is that so, Mr. Hempseed? inquired the stranger politely. Nay, sir, replied Mr. Hempseed, much irritated, I dunno as I can give you the information you require. Faith, then, said the stranger, let us hope, my worthy host, that these clever spies will not succeed in upsetting your extremely loyal opinions. But this was too much for Mr. Jellyband's pleasant equanimity. He burst into an uproarious fit of laughter, which was soon echoed by those who happened to be in his debt. <laughs> he laughed in every key, did my worthy host, and laughed until his side ached and his eyes streamed. At me! Hark at that! Did you hear him say that they'd be upsetting my opinions, eh? Lord love you, sir! But you do say some queer things. "'Well, Mr. Jellyband,' said Mr. Hempstead, sententiously, "'you know what the scriptures say. "'Let him who stands take heed lest he fall.' "'But then hark ye, Mr. Hempstead,' retorted Jellyband, "'still holding his sides with laughter. "'The scriptures didn't know me. "'Why, I wouldn't so much as drink a glass of ale "'with one of them murdering Frenchmen, "'and nothing would make me change my opinions. "'Why, I've heard it said that them frog-eaters "'can't even speak the king's English.' So, of course, if any of them tried to speak their God-forsaken lingo to me, why, I should spot them directly, see? And forewarned is forearmed, as the saying goes. Ay, my honest friend, assented the stranger cheerfully, I see that you are much too sharp, and a match for any twenty Frenchmen. And here's to your very good health, my worthy host, if you'll do me the honour to finish this bottle of mine with me. I'm sure you're very polite, sir." said Mr. Jellyband, wiping his eyes, which were still streaming with the abundance of his laughter, and I don't mind if I do. The stranger poured out a couple of tankards full of wine, and having offered one to mine host, he took the other himself. "'Loyal Englishmen, as we all are,' he said, whilst the same humorous smile played around the corners of his thin lips, "'loyal, as we are, we must admit that this, at least, is one good thing which comes to us from France. Aye, will none of us deny that, sir?' assented mine host. "'And here's to the best landlord in England, our worthy host, Mr. Jellyband,' said the stranger, in a loud tone of voice. "'Hip, hip! Hurrah!' retorted the whole company present. Then there was a loud clapping of hands, and mugs and tankards made a rattling music upon the tables to the accompaniment of loud laughter at nothing in particular, and of Mr. Jellyband's muttered exclamations. "'Just fancy me being talked over by any godforsaken foreigner! What?' I oh, love you, sir, but you do say some queer things. To which obvious fact the stranger heartily assented. It was certainly a preposterous suggestion that any one could ever upset Mr. Jellyband's firmly rooted opinions anent the utter worthlessness of the inhabitants of the whole continent of Europe. End of chapter two.